<laughs> as I had to be just a little tricky and, and try to get my way as best I could being a little Machiavellian, mm -hmm. which made me like Mark, Michael Corleone, interesting. God, that's a cool, that's a cool comparison. I would always like the character in my movies because I find my situation changes and I sort of have to be. And in, in, in Apocalypse Now, I was crazy like Kurtz because I was in such an insane situation. And I was wondering if you could take me back to the moment where uh, Vito Corleone uh, says to Johnny Fontaine, I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. I would love to know just your memory of that day of, of Mr. Brando's reading of that line, just what you remember about that moment. That moment is not one of the the stellar moments. I remember the, the, the take when Duval... Uh, tells Marlon that they that Sonny has been killed. Mr. So. Coppola, this is... J you can call Shirley me Francis. I'm, Francis. Not, I'm old, but I'm not that old. <laughs> we're going, we don't need roads. Actually, um, have always wanted to sit across from you, sir, and they offered me a virtual interview, and I said, I will fly myself in to sit in front oh, of you. Where'd so, you come from? Uh, Chicago. Well, that's close. Yeah, it's a quick flight. Mm -hmm. I would have I would have flown to the moon, if I'm being honest with you. Chicago's nice. Oh, it's a beautiful city, especially right now. Um, first of all, Mr. Coppola, this is a real honor. I really do appreciate your time. You. Um, I know when you made The Godfather, you were fighting the studio on every decision imaginable, whether it was the casting or shooting in Sicily or setting the film in a particular time period. It feels like with this film, you put yourself in a position where the only person you were answering to was yourself. You know, you would think so, but that wasn't the case in a funny, in, in, in an exotic way. But yes, I, that's why I borrowed the money to make it. So I didn't have to be told what I could do or not do. I was wondering if you could compare those experiences on, on having a little bit more freedom on a movie like this versus every decision on The Godfather being told, no, yeah. you can't do that. Well, you know, in human relations, uh, there, there, there is more you have to come up against than just the fact that someone is financing or you, or is your boss. Uh, you know, I mean, if you're living in a neighborhood, your neighbors, you're not working for them. But if you suddenly paint your house uh, peppermint uh, color, they'll say, "Well, you can't do that." In other words, you rub up against uh, disagreement or uh, agreement. Well, well, not only in, in your employment situation. I mean, you have a you work for a company, and you have someone saying you can't do that or you can do that. But um, are you married? I am not. Well, you're not married, so you don't have that problem. But you have family, and and they say you can't do this or you can't you can't dress like that or uh, you can't you park your car in front of my driveway. In other words, we're constantly uh, trying to be harmonious with our fellow human beings. So even in my situation where I was borrowing the money, so it was my money, I was still in a in a hierarchy uh, that 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 had evolved into a certain way of doing things. And and the movie business today is different than the movie business was even 14 years ago. I sort of quit I didn't quit movies, but I after I made a film called uh, the John Grisham's The Rainmaker I stopped being a professional director for about 14 years, and I just said, I want to be a student. I just want to, you know, learn and, 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 and make very cheap, you know, movies. I'll put the money up myself, make a $300,000 movie, because I wanted, I wanted to learn more about not only cinema, but myself, you know. And, uh, do, do you know the great Japanese uh, uh, artist named Ozu? Of course. Yeah, Ozu made a lot of movies when he was young. He was making college comedies. But when he became old, he started to make these uh, family dramas, Tokyo Story. And, and he had evolved the style. He started out doing silly comedies, but he became this profound uh, author of these family dramas. So I, I knew that story. And I said, I wonder what, you know, I made a lot of films, different styles. The Godfather's a classic style. Apocalypse Now was wild. One from the Heart was the, like theatrical. I, I wonder what I'm going to, my style will be when I'm old. So I took this time to try to learn more about cinema and myself. And, and then after that, with what I learned, I made a Megalopolis. And of course, nobody wanted to. 
no studio wanted to make Megalopolis. What do you want to make a Roman epic set in modern America? What's what's that? There's no film. What what film like that has ever made a lot of money? Which is what they do. Why why they they make films that have made a lot of money because they want to have no risk, you know. So I said, well, I'll, I'll take the risk. I'll put up the money. But still, I had a rub up against even within working with the crew and everything of how. Movies have become today much more hierarchical. Uh, the studios in, encouraged it because they know that if there's a if there's a production designer that they've approved and they vetted what they call vetted that doesn't go over budget, then then they want that to be the boss and 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 the five art directors under them. You you can in the old days you go up to any art director and say do this to that and they they do it. Now you do that, and they say, well, I can't step on any toes. You have to say that to the... In other words, there's a more of a hierarchical way to work. I didn't want to work that way. I never worked that way. I mean, if I want to go to an electrician and say, when he kisses her, shake the light, you don't want him to say, well, you got to talk to the gaffer, uh, which is... So So what I'm trying to express to you is, even though I was the financier, I still was part of a a system and and a way of work that was the what it was like in Georgia where I was making the film. So there's still a, f- a friction and disagreement, even if you're the putting up all the money yourself. So there's still remnants of the Godfather experience, even fifty yeah, plus. Yeah, it wasn't years it later. Was, that. It was I was young and 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 had no power. So so everyone would say, well, who's he? he well, why should he even be here direct? What, what, what who says he can direct the movie? You know, and and I. And I had no answer. <laughs> I, guess I had to be just a little tricky and, and try to get my way as best I could, being a little Machiavellian, mm-hmm. which made me like Mark, Michael Corleone. Interesting. God, that's a cool. That's a cool comparison. I always like the character in my movies because I find my situation changes, and I sort of have to be. And you know, in, in, in Apocalypse Now, I was crazy like Kurtz because I was in such an insane situation. I'm making a movie about the Vietnam War. Vietnam was still going on at that time. And no one thought America wanted to see a movie about a war we were losing. And and and, and I had to be like this megalomaniac. To, so I became like Kurtz. So in the first movie, I had to be like Michael. In the second movie, I had to be like Kurtz. Uh, I, I even made films where the character loses a son, and I lost my son. So I said, "Wait a second, is am I am, am I doomed to having to be like the movies I'm making? I, that means I ought to choose a movie about a very happy person, because then I'll be a very happy person." But no, that now I am a grandfather, I am a father, I am a great grandfather, and and you know, I I with all my heart, I want the children to have a beautiful world, but the world is looks like it's a mess today. So I wanted to address that in this film, and that's why I made Megalopolis. And you did beautifully. They're pulling me out of here, but I just wanted to ask really quickly. I, I host a show in Chicago called The Moments That Made Us, where I sit down with the, the filmmakers and the storytellers and the actors who are part of the, the movie scenes, individual moments that define who we are as people in a society. And I was wondering if you could take me back to the moment where uh, Vito Corleone uh, says to Johnny Fontaine, I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. I would love to know just your memory of that day of, of Mr. Brando's reading of that line, just what you remember about that moment. Well, I I, I, don't, I don't have that moment is not one of the the stellar moments in, in it because we all knew even by then that that expression from the novel had become a famous line. You know, uh, I, I was of course always more concerned on on. On The Godfather, I was more concerned with my team of actors. I I, I was having a lot of uh, distress with the studio, and they didn't. Uh, and even the the photographer, who was a genius, but you know had a certain. Everyone had a you know everyone when you make a movie, especially when you're young. There's no everyone in it thinks they can do a better job than you can. You know, so so I I bonded with the actors. And, and that was my strength. I didn't have a lot of strength, but if I had any strength, it was that the actors who knew I had fought for them 
uh, were on my side, and 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 and, and even in Megalopolis, it was the same thing. I, I you, you know, when there was disarray with some of the production style of you know whether it was going to be like a Marvel picture or not like a Marvel picture, it was my cast that stuck up for me and said, "No, this is an exciting film we're making." So, but I don't remember the, the Brando saying, "I'll make him an offer." I can't refuse. I don't remember that line. I remember the 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 take when Duval uh, tells Marlon that they that Sonny has been killed because Duval only really liked to do one or two takes and it was very good in the first two takes and I begged him to take a third one and he didn't want to do it he didn't he felt he had done it and that take where he says they killed Sonny you know the uh, was his third take no no yeah. kidding yeah Mr. Coppola, this is you can call me Francis. I'm Francis. Not, I'm old, but I'm not that old. <laughs> My mom would kill me. Oh, yeah. I just want to tell you how how much your work means to me, sir. I was I was raised understanding what great film was by being able to watch your films, and well, I just want to say what a real honor it is to be able to sit across from you. Great. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. You. Is there any way I could bother you for a picture? Oh sure. No. JB, I'd yeah. like to yeah. No, thank you. Oh my God, thank you so much. Of course. That was We don't need roads.